Welcome to the Jesse Free Show on WMTR 1250 AM, a Beasley Media Group station. Brought to you by www.insidernj.com. Online news for political insiders in New Jersey. Streaming live on WMTRAM.com and TalkStreamLive.com. The lack of judges in New Jersey is leaving thousands of family lives in limbo as divorce custody cases drag on. 64 out of 463 trial court seats open across the board are being delayed from family court to criminal court causing catastrophic problems. This is a pervasive problem throughout the Superior Court system in New Jersey with too many cases and not enough judges. I'm Jesse Fries. My guest this morning is Geraldine Lawrence, president of the New Jersey State Bar Association and managing member and founder of Lawrence Law Divorce and Family Attorneys in Wachung, New Jersey the winner of a multitude of awards. She was named as one of the New Jersey's best lawyers for families. In addition, she was selected by her peers as one of New Jersey's top 10 matrimonial lawyers and one of the 10 best attorneys for the state of New Jersey. Welcome back, Geraldine Lawrence. Thank you, Jesse. Thanks for having me. Well, it's a pleasure. Geraldine, as you said, the judicial system as a whole continues to suffer drastically from the unsustainable number of judicial vacancies. Will you elaborate on this? Well, and it's where we have seen uh, the governor and the legislature essentially cripple and paralyze our judiciary. Your opening comments, I think, mentioned 54 vacancies. I just want to let you know the number is up to 69 wow. vacancies forcing the Chief Justice of our Supreme Court, the crown jewel of New Jersey judiciary, he has been forced now to shut down civil and matrimonial trials in six counties across two vicinages and has indicated that if help is not on the way shortly, that shutdown can expand across the state. And this week, the Senate Judiciary Committee meeting was held and on the agenda, they did not have one judge on the Mm. agenda. So the outlook is quite bleak. The governor is not even in our state. So it does not appear that anybody is talking about this. They're not in Trenton meeting. And so we are paralyzed at the moment and children, women, men, families, accident victims are suffering and the trickle-down effect, very wide and broad. So real New Jerseyans are suffering as they're being deprived of their access to their third branch of government. And you know the cases so well of their suffering. I would like you to elaborate on that, give us a few examples. As you so well know, as a divorce attorney yourself, Geraldine Lawrence. So right now, parents who do not like each other very much and have decided to divorce. Um, They are forced to live together. Many of these families have children. So children are now stuck living in a home that their parents are not getting along very well. I'm sure there's some tension and strife and stress. These children are feeling that. Suicide rates have increased in Mm. our adolescent community. So that's an impact of not being able to access the judiciary. These parents are not able to have their divorce processed because they don't have access to the court because the court is not hearing divorce trials. So custody and parenting time disputes are magnified. There are families that are not getting the appropriate amount of support. And so uh, either by if it's child support or alimony or contribution to college or health insurance, or unreimbursed medical expenses, you know, those families are suffering, as well as accident victims, somebody that may have you know, been rear-ended in a car accident and have lost their job, have lost wages, have mounting medical bills, and can't feed their family or put a roof over their head, their trial is now halted as well. So backlog is going to increase because new filings are occurring every day. There's just not enough judges to hear these cases. 
And I hear there's a hundred thousand cases that are backlogged. That that's that's just inexcusable. Our now, backlog has increased tremendously. I know just alone in our domestic violence cases, that backlog has increased 10 times. Unbelievable. What is, though, the primary cause for the backlogs? You mentioned that you don't think there's cooperation with the governor, but the historic number of of judicial vacancies is just out of control. Are politics playing a role in tamping down these nominations? That's all that's playing a role is straight up politics. Straight up politics. It's not, there are plenty of qualified candidates out there that want to serve. So that's not the issue. There are plenty of cases. There is tons of inventory that need to be heard. What we're lacking are judges in the seats. We do not have enough judges. So the judges that happen to be in the seats are in triage mode. They are a court of emergency now. Right now, on a daily basis, they're tending to those most emergent matters. And if you're not an emergent matter, you're falling by the wayside. And based on New Jersey's constitution, there are only two branches of government that can put a judge in a seat. And that is the governor needs to nominate and the Senate needs to confirm. Those are the only two places we can look. The governor is not nominating enough and the Senate is not confirming enough at a pace within which they need to be confirmed. Now, it's an important job, for sure. We want qualified people on the bench, but the pace and the priority in which disaster has garnered is woefully insufficient. They need to be in Trenton. They need to have a judicial vacancy summit. They need to all come with their lists. The governor can bring his list of who he wants on the bench. Let the senators bring their list of who they want on the bench and sit and talk and communicate and not leave this judicial vacancy summit until they've left with enough vacancies to fill not only the 69 that currently exist, but the chief has also told us 23 additional vacancies will be occurring Mm. by the end of June. And now, Jesse, you know, we're heading into budget season and then we're heading into re-election season. So, That is what's going to really start taking the time and attention of the senators and the governor, which is horrifying to think about because they're paying so little attention now to the judicial vacancies. When the budget comes around and re-election comes around, how much farther this catastrophe is going to fall on the list is really just shameful. So they need to act and they need to act now in a much more hastened prioritized manner, the court is on fire and nobody seems to be paying attention to that. Absolutely, unquestionably abominable. My guests this morning, Geraldine Lawrence, president of the New Jersey State Bar Association and managing member and founder of Lawrence Law Divorce and Family Attorneys, Wachung, New Jersey, on the drastic shortage of judges in New Jersey. We'll be right back with Geraldine Lawrence. Welcome back to the Jesse Freeze Show, brought to you by www.insiderinj.com. Online news for political insiders in New Jersey. Welcome back. My guest this morning, Geraldine Lawrence, president of the New Jersey State Bar Association on the drastic shortage of judges in New Jersey. I will have to say, though, attorneys who have cases pending said they applaud Governor Phil Murphy for his pick of former Superior Court Judge, Appellate Division Judge Douglas Fasciel to fill one of the three current vacancies on the state Supreme Court. But they said they are frustrated with the pace of getting judges appointed in the lower courts. Your comment on that? Well, he's picked two great justices. So he has Justice Fasciali is on the bench, as is Justice Rachel Wayner after. So, and those were great picks and their confirmation once they finally got 
to that stage. Uh, mm. Justice Rachel Wainer, after I think she languished for about 18 months. Justice Fashali, he was he was pretty. He went through the process very quickly. Uh, total star there. But we still are down one Supreme Court justice. So we still have one vacancy on our Supreme Court. And I haven't heard a peep about who's moving in that regard. So not only do we have 69 trial court vacancies, 23 looming, we still have a vacancy on the highest court in the land. Inexcusable. An attorney in Springfield, New Jersey, mother of two teens in a divorce case at a union county, said she's been doing family law for 35 years in this state. And this is probably the worst, she said, I've ever seen it in terms of our inability to get trials and cases. She said she honestly doesn't remember a time when it was this bad in so many different counties. And we're hearing this all over. Now one division has to pluck judges from another division to plug holes in a daily basis. As New Jersey Court Chief Justice Stuart Rabner said, this is no way to operate the courts. That's correct. And the chief has been saying this for a long time now. The chief has said routinely that he needs no more than 25 to 30 vacancies for the court to function properly. And for years, they've ignored that cry. And he's been try- he's been operating for a sustained period of time now with more than 50 and sometimes 60 vacancies. But these judges are tired, they're overworked, they're stretched too thin, they're constantly in triage mode. Some of the judges are leaving even before their retirement age. That's, mm. that's just how tough this job has been. And let's remember when the pandemic hit, our court did not shut down for one minute. That's they right. transitioned immediately to virtual or telephonic appearances. So these judges have been working very, very hard. They've been doing oftentimes the job of two judges, three judges, and there is no relief in sight. There is no help on the way. And that's the frustrating part about all of this is when the chief came to Atlantic City last May and spent some time at the New Jersey State Bar Association's annual meeting, he was very clear as to what needed to happen. And even his recent shutdown order, when he shut down the six counties with regard to trials and civil and the matrimonial part, you can tell how pained he is and Mm. how stressed he is of having to take such drastic action. This type of action has never had to be taken in our state. Never. And so he does not take kindly to closing the courthouse doors to New Jerseyans, to taxpayers who rely on the third branch of government. So this is a drastic step. It's an unprecedented step. It's shameful that the governor and the legislature has forced him to do this, but they've really left him with no choice. And the case backlog, as you said, grew during the coronavirus pandemic, and so did the number of court cases, which, of course, put increased demand on existing judges and staff. But older judges now are being looked at as a way to ease the glut of opening. They want to raise the retirement age of judges to help tackle a backlog of cases. What is your position on this, Geraldine Lawrence? I think that's absurd. If someone came, I think, to the judges and said, look, you know, we think 70 is the new 50. Let's have a cooperative discussion about extending your retirement age. Maybe the judiciary would be receptive to that. But that's not what's happening. What's happening is you have a legislature that has failed to do their job saying to already overworked judges, hey, why don't you guys work five more years because we can't figure out how to fill Mm. the vacancies. I mean, it is the most preposterous. The intestinal fortitude of the legislature to even make such a proposal is just knows no bounds. In in my mind, if I was a sitting judge, that would really offend me that I'm having somebody draft a bill who's not doing their job of confirming enough judges and then turn around and say to me, hey, why don't you work five years longer until we figure our stuff out? No. No. How about, Mr. Governor and legislature, you figure out how to put judges on the bench. That's your constitutional mandate. 
you do your job. And then once we have a full complement of judges, come and talk to me and let's talk about, do we have the capability, the, are we qualified enough to extend the retirement age from 70 to 75? But the conversation right now to have it that way is really just not an appropriate conversation. So in essence, you as head of the Bar Association and the whole association wants Governor Murphy to work with lawmakers to fill the vacancies rather than give already overworked judges the chance to stay on the bench, correct? Correct. Well, we've got to go on a break. We're talking this morning to Geraldine Lawrence, president of the New Jersey State Bar Association and managing member and founder of Lawrence Law Divorce and Family Attorneys, Wachung, New Jersey, on the horrific shortage of judges in New Jersey. We'll be right back with Geraldine Lawrence. Welcome back to the Jesse Freeze Show, brought to you by www.insiderinj.com. Online news for political insiders in New Jersey. Welcome back. Our guest this morning, Gerald and Lawrence, president of the New Jersey State Bar Association on the drastic shortage of judges in New Jersey. Gerald, another wrinkle is an unwritten rule in the state Senate known as senatorial courtesy, which allows any lawmaker to block a nominee who lives in their home county or district. And Senator Courtesy is being blamed for several stalled judicial judgeships in the counties, such as Essex and Morris, as well as others. Will you comment on this? So senatorial courtesy has been here for a long time. Senators like their senatorial courtesy. It's a red herring. It's a dead end to talk about getting rid of senatorial courtesy. It's not going to happen. The state bar considered action on it. We do not have standing to be able to bring such a lawsuit to try to get rid of senatorial courtesy. That's not necessarily the entire issue. Legislatures and governors before now have had senatorial courtesy and have found it within themselves to figure out how to staff our judiciary. And how that happens is they cooperated, they communicated, and they collaborated. That's not happening. So we can't blame this all on senatorial courtesy. Yes, that's here. Yes, that's part of the problem, but that's not going away. So we should stop focusing our time and energy and attention on something that's not going anywhere. And let's fix it within the parameters that we know we can do and are fixable. And that is just good old fashioned, getting in a room, coming prepared with a list and talking. There is no substitute for good old-fashioned communication, and that's what they need to do. And as you said, the extreme judge shortage in New Jersey is halting some trials in six New Jersey counties. Most civil divorce proceedings are being suspended as Chief Justice Rebner warned of further effects from judicial crisis because of this. And I, I'd like to name the courts that are halted trials and what they include. I know it's Cumberland, Gloucester, Hunterton, Salem, Somerset, and Warren counties. And they will suspend civil and matrimonial trials starting February 21st. What will this do? Those counties are shut down. They are crippled. Litigants' rights are trampled. And in those six counties, those two vicinages, vicinage 13 and 15, the counties that you just mentioned, so that's six as of now, you, if you have a civil case, some type of personal injury case, you will not have a trial. And if you have a divorce case, you will not have a trial. And Jesse, I think if things do not start moving. It would not surprise me. This is pure speculation on my part. If Bergen County doesn't shortly get shut down, uh, Essex right. County. I mean, those every single county in our state but one, which is Burlington County. Every single county but one has a vacancy. Well, this is incomprehensible. Something has to be done. Is is anyone listening? 
When the doors of the courthouse are closed, people entitled to their day in courts suffer real harm. What do you think can really be done about it, Gerald and Lawrence? I think people need to. I think people need to rise up. Anyone listening to your show, I hope they immediately send an email to the governor, to the Senate president, and other members that they may have a personal relationship with in the legislature, whether it be in the Senate or even the Assembly. You know, it's a small community, the legislature, and they all know each other. Uh, and so if they are hearing from their constituents that they are upset by the courthouse doors being closed to either them personally or somebody that they may know, a friend, a neighbor, a relative, hopefully that sparks action. Yet to be determined, we have not seen the movement that we need to see. Uh, like I said, last Monday, it was really disheartening to know that there was a Senate Judiciary Committee meeting and not one judge on the agenda. Mm -hmm. So they really need to pick up their pace. If they don't, soon we're going to be in the number 70s, 80s. And if they don't do anything by the end of June, you're going to see vacancies starting with a nine, potentially 92 vacancies. But this is affecting so many cases, as you said, from criminal to the divorce cases. Tell us what is really happening to the children of these divorce cases. The fathers and, and mothers are getting extremely anxious and depressed. It's causing all sorts of harmful problems. It is. It, it, it's a divorce is stressful as it is. Can you imagine being told that there is no end in sight? You, there is no date certainty. There's no trial date available to you as to when your matter will be disposed of. It's extremely stressful. There's also cases where there's a parent not seeing their children, mm -hmm. right? There's a custody and parenting time dispute. And those parents are going a long time without having access to their child because they don't have a court date available to them. So imagine going for a prolonged period of time, weeks, months, without seeing your child because you're in a dispute with the other parent. You can't agree what that parenting time schedule should look like. And there's not judges available to help resolve that dispute. I can't think of a more horrific thing to happen to a parent. And the sad part about this is there are judges, there are plenty of capable people in the state of New Jersey, don't you agree? Capable oh, of becoming tons. a judge. Tons. So so the question again is why? Why don't they do something about it? How, how quickly can this problem be resolved and when? There's not a shortage of qualified, capable people, lawyers out there that want to ascend to the bench. So that's not the issue. So the governor needs to make the list of who he thinks is qualified and wants to be on the bench. And the senators need to make their list of who they think is qualified. And they need to talk about those names. They need to swap lists. Until that happens, they remain locked in a stalemate. Are there any other states facing this problem that New Jersey is facing? I don't think so. I haven't heard of any state that is having the issues that, that we are having. Well, unfortunately, our time has come to a close. We thank you, Gerald and Lawrence, president of the New Jersey State Bar Association and managing member and founder of Lawrence Law Divorce and Family Attorneys in Wachung, New Jersey, for a, a most informative show. And we want to keep this running. So we look forward to future updates and we'll follow this till we find that our judges are back where they belong. And I thank you, Gerald and Lawrence, for all you're doing for the state of New Jersey. Thank you so much, Jesse. Thanks for amplifying this message for us. We really appreciate it. We appreciate you. Stay tuned to Julie Briggs and her riveting political roundtable coming up next. Don't miss it. Have a good day. Good day. <laughs>